you will never disappoint who you are is so much more you're the rod in my hand the power within you're the promise to the end you will be saved Once again, an honor and a privilege for me to bring you the Word of God today. And today, this Word is coming to you as a reminder of the importance of the mind. And I want to talk to you on the battle for your mind in 2024. The battle for your mind in 2024 uh, this is a reminder of the importance of how important the mind is not only for for god but for you as a person it is a very important thing and i want us to look at the word of god today and to see the importance of the mind so that we can in this year this whole year, focus on what God is saying about our minds. So I pray that the Lord will bless this word in your heart. And I want to read in 3 John verse 2 out of the Amplified. It says here, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in every way. Notice the word of God says every way that you may prosper in every way and that your body may keep well, even as your soul keeps well and prospers. So here we can see that when your soul, and the soul is the mind, the emotions, and the will. So the Bible says if your soul keeps well and prospers then you will prosper in every other way and in your body as well in other words you will be healthy so i want to make a few statements uh, before we get into more scriptures uh, about the mind we must realize that we as people we are a spirit and we have a soul and we live in a body so the mind the soul is a very important part of us human beings so and there is a battle going on right now the lord is busy with me i believe the holy spirit uh, for the last two months the Holy Spirit is busy with me and talking to me on the mind and how important the mind is if we want to see a move of God in our lives, in the church, in our country, and so forth. It is very important that we remind ourselves that the mind plays a 
vital role in our lives. So there is a battle going on and we must know that the enemy is after our minds. But so is God. Praise him for that. So is God. You know, the devil is aware that our minds is the arena of success. And whoever controls your mind controls your life. That is vital to understand that and to know that. And this is where the battle is fought. The battle is fought in our minds. And uh, this is the control center of our lives. And the Lord wants to be the Lord of our minds as well. Joyce Meyer always says, where the mind goes, the body will follow. We should renew our thoughts in order to get God's thoughts in our lives. And I want to read to us Romans 12 verse 2 out of the New King James. Most of us, we know the scripture, it says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, I want to show you the meaning of the word conformed. And do not be conformed to this world. That word conformed in the Greek, it means to be molded according to a pattern. To be molded according to a pattern. You see, and that is what the enemy and the world wants from us. They want to mold us to the world's pattern. So that we can think as the world thinks. You know, and we can uh, later on do what the world is doing. So, do not be molded, this word says, to the world's pattern. We are in God's pattern. We are in the word of God's pattern. So, but the enemy wants to bring us over into his pattern into the world's pattern. So it says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. Now the word transformed in the Greek, it means a complete, total change. It is as if you are walking one side and you turn around and you walk the opposite side. It is like, uh, that change in a caterpillar that becomes a beautiful butterfly. That is what this word means. But be transformed. That is what Paul is saying here to this people in Rome. Be transformed. Turn around. Change from a caterpillar to a butterfly. And he says further here, by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now renew, the word renew in the Greek, it means to make new or to change your thinking to God's thinking. To change your thinking to God's thinking. So we need to change. We need to renew our minds to God's thinking. What is God thinking about things in our lives? What is God thinking about situations in this world, in our lives? And that is what we need to focus on to see what God thinks. Now, Paul says here, we, knew, we need to do something with our minds. And we must realize that Paul is writing here to believers. Born again Christians. 
filled with the Holy Spirit. Yet the fact that they were born again believers had no effect on their minds. So, and Paul wants this Christians in Rome to change their minds. And we must realize that God is not going to do anything about our minds. It is up to us to do something about our minds. God already gave His word. God already gave us everything. His Holy Spirit, the anointing, the power, everything. So that we can, so that we are able to change our minds. But we need to do it. We need to take the word of God. We need to read it. We need to get that revelations of the word of God into us. You know, and fill our minds with the word of God. Fill our minds uh, with what God is saying to us. And change our minds to that pattern that God wants for us. And that is so important. Ephesians 4 verse 23, out of the Amplified, it says, And be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind. Constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind. In brackets he says, having a fresh mental and spiritual attitude. People, we need a lot of renewing in the spirit of our minds. I believe that is what the Holy Spirit is dealing with me. Not only for my own life, but I believe it's also for the life of the church. A lot of renewing is necessary in our lives. And one of the greatest needs of the church today is that God's people renew their minds according to the word of God. So that we can get the mind of Christ inside our minds. Ephesians 6 verse 10. Reading out of the New King James, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Now, let me just stop there for a moment. The word strong in the Greek, it is uh, the word in dunamo in the Greek. And that word strong, it means to empower, to enable. To increase in strength and be made strong. That is powerful. He says here, be strong in the Lord. You know, get empowered in the Lord. Get enabled in the Lord. Increase in strength in the Lord. Uh, become strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And then in verse 11, he tells us what to do, how to do that, how to get strong in the Lord. And then he says here in verse 11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now you can go and read it by yourself. Ephesians 6 from verse 11. And it tells you all the armor that we have as a, uh, as a church in God. So go and read it. I'm just going to focus on verse 17 of Ephesians 6. Which says, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. Now, the helmet of salvation is one of the armors of God, and that protects our head. That protects our mind. So it is very important for us to put on the helmet of salvation. That word put on means receive the power of God. 
you, you see all this armor of God, it is actually the power of God that is working in us and for us so that we can stand against the wiles of the devil. So receive the helmet of salvation, that protection for your mind that God has for you. It is already there. God has already given it to us. But we need to take action and we need to get the word of God inside of us. We need to see what God is thinking, what God is saying for our lives. And we need to uh, meditate on that. Church, there are so many influences today in this world. I mean, we all know that. Social media is coming to us every day. The bad news is coming to us every day. Things that is going on in the world, wars and so forth, are coming to us every day. So we get a lot of things from the outside, a lot of information, a lot of news and so forth from the outside that is coming to us. So we need to protect ourselves. We need to protect our minds. And we need to get more of what God is thinking, what God is saying into our minds. So that this things of the world does not overwhelm us, you know, and bring us to a place where we just think about the wars and we think about the bad things in this world and we don't know what is going to happen and all these things. So God has given us his armor, the whole armor of God, so that we can stand against the attacks of the enemy, of the devil. So that we can stand against everything that the devil wants to throw at us. Because he wants to change our pattern to his pattern and to the world's pattern. But this armor of God, we need to, to take it and to live with it in our lives. Uh, let me read verse 17 again and take the hel helm of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You see, the word of God is that sword of the spirit. And the word will help us, you know, to overcome or to have victory over things that the world is throwing at us at any stage of our lives. So we need to walk and stay in the power of God every day because we have already everything that God has provided for us in the Spirit. Amen. So the word warfare, I want to look at the word warfare. You know, we know that there is a war going on in our minds. And the word warfare is only used a few times in the New Testament. And every time it is used, it is used in connection with the mind. So the Bible is telling about the warfare that is going on in our minds. And every time that word is used, it is in connection with the mind. Let me give you one scripture. About that. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3, 4, and 5. For though we are we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. That's powerful. Let me read this verse again. For the weapons of our warfare. You see, we are in a war concerning our minds. 
For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. You see that uh, warfare is against the knowledge of God. You see the devil wants to you know, to, to bring that knowledge of God, the word of God, he wants to, 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 to remove that from our lives. And he wants to, you know, bring us into arguments. He wants to bring us into thoughts where we thought about what the devil is doing and what is going on in the world and so on. But we need to cast that thoughts down arguments the word of God says and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God every thought we need to bring into captivity every thought that is not from God we need to bring into captivity to the obedience of Christ in other words we need to bring our mind or thoughts in line with the word of God. And that is so vital in our lives. So church, I want to say today, we need to be spiritually awake in this time. We need to protect our eye gate and our ear gate from what is the world is wants to put into us. We need to cast down every thought that is against the knowledge of God. That is against the word of God. And we and God will win this battle for our minds. So everybody that is listening today, everyone in the sound of my voice, I want to say that we don't have to surrender. To what the world is throwing at us. We don't have to surrender. What the devil is telling us. What he wants to see us. And what he wants to hear us. We don't have to surrender. We, we don't have to submit to that. Because we've got everything that we need from God. His word. His spirit. The knowledge of God. Everything. Everything. And it is our job to put that things, that armor of God into our lives. And so that God can be with us and so that we can move with the thoughts of God and so that we can do what God wants for us in our lives. His will, His plan for our lives in Jesus' name. I want to pray for all of us today. You know, I realize that all of us, sometimes it is difficult because of everything that is coming to us. But God is going to help us. God is going to bring us through everything. So let us just pray together. And I want to pray for you that the Holy Spirit will come and help you, empower you, strengthen you, so that you can be victorious in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And we thank you that we can today be reminded of the importance of the mind in our lives. And I pray for everybody in the sound of my mind, in the sound of my words. Please come. Holy Spirit, and touch every person in Jesus' name. Come and empower us. Come and strengthen us so that we can have more of you in our minds and in our spirits in Jesus' name. Thank you that you mold us to your pattern and that you help us with that. 
in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for that. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for helping us in this, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. The Lord bless you and have a wonderful day in Jesus' name. You will never disappoint. Who you are is so much more. You're the rod in my hand, the power within. You're the promise to.